like to take an opportunity now to invite up our synagogue president, Todd Sugarman, to offer a few words. Can you hear me? Everybody here? Good. Good morning. Welcome back to your spiritual home. If you're looking forward to listening to a guy who never saw a microphone he didn't like, a smooth-talking and funny speechwriter, you're out of luck. Bruce is sitting over there. <laughs> Instead, you got a guy who has written eight Rosh Hashanah speeches and is not smart enough to memorize them. Instead, I have to read everything I wrote so I don't forget what I want to say. Yes, this is the State of the Temple speech, and as you all know, this has been another challenging year. It's especially challenging when we can't gauge the thinking of our congregation when we don't have events in the building, such as religious school, meetings, etc. Over the past nine years, myself, your clergy, and lay leaders could always get a feel for what you, our congregant, wanted or, or were feeling. So it's been, a challenge, it's been challenging to the leadership of this congregation during these COVID years. Fortunately, there was one important clue you gave us of how we were doing, and it came last year. It came after young Kipper, and you spoke loudly. Our annual giving campaign was one of the largest giving campaigns we've ever had over our nine-year history. We raised close to $80,000. And with that, it told us that, yes, we were doing all the right things. You were happy with the weekly phone announcements the weekly email blasts, the park and pray, and all the events we could possibly do on Zoom to keep you all engaged. Surprisingly, we got many new volunteers for our newest business, selling chickens. That's right, selling chickens. On average, we made $3,500 per time and made $32,000 last year doing it. Incredible but true. You, our congregants, help keep this temple alive and vibrant. Of course, in any family, and yes, we are a family, there are others who help contribute to us getting to this point where we can pray together again. So I'd like to acknowledge these people, and we start with the reason you are members, our clergy. I've always said we have, great, we have a great clergy team. Rabbi Alex and Cantor Frank are always enthusiastic, hardworking, and always looking for ways to better serve you. My contract negotiations with them six months ago lasted about one minute. I'm exaggerating, but they both wanted to stay here. They both love their jobs, and they both told me that they have a lot more work to accomplish here. And of course, we have him here for another five years and hopefully beyond. I'm proud to call them my friends. Joanne Marcusi is our executive director, has become a Zoom master, Joanne has also been the hardest working employee at CSS. But during these last two years, she has, hardly, she has rarely taken off. She works during the weekdays, weekends, and evenings. She is a 24-7 employee. Try finding that in today's workplace. As a matter of fact, I've had to reprimand her for not taking vacation time. And when I mean reprimand, I mean it. Just ask her fiance, Robert Altman. I'm very proud to call her my friend. Our executive secretary, Nancy McCordy, continues to work hard and is always on top of items that need to be sent out on a timely basis. I'd like to thank Renee, Renee Gatozzi for helping us keep an eye on our finances. She makes my job and the finance committee's job a lot easier. Enav Simon and her incredible staff of teachers have gone above and beyond during these COVID years. Try getting kids to pay attention on Zoom. I'm sure there were many frustrating days. However, the teachers stuck to it and our students are better off for it. Harvey Horowitz continues to be our amazing B'nai Mitzvah teacher, especially during this very difficult year for Harvey as he lost his beloved wife, Myra. Our condolences again, Harvey. Your Temple family will always be here for you. Paul Staley continues to provide the canter the needs musically. And finally, Kyle Burt, our maintenance person, continues to keep this building clean and also sets up park and pray. With any religious organization, there is your lay leadership. 
which provides support that is crucial to a well-run organization. I'd like to thank our board of directors. We have many new members on our board of directors, and unfortunately, we never met in person. It was always on Zoom, and surprisingly, we always seem to have full attendance. So there's something said for having Zoom meetings. Hopefully over the next year, we will be able to meet the new members in person. I'd like to thank the women of Shir Shalom for their continued support. I'd like to thank Dan Kester for his leadership in running the men's group and for sending out the joke of the day. I don't know how he comes up with all those jokes every day. I can't even remember jokes that were told me 15 minutes ago. <laughs> the next group of people I'd like to thank have been together for seven years. This is your exec board. The exec board is comprised of a president, five VPs, a treasurer, and a secretary, with a rabbi attending all meetings. These names are Mindy Wyman, who will be having surgery Friday, and our thoughts and prayers are with you, Mindy. Sherry Joe Rice, Marina Finkelstein, Bruce Chorus, Larry Poses, and Joe Glickman. You probably know them all by now. They are at every fundraising event, most services, they are setting up tables, taking down tables, taking out the trash, washing dishes, or cleaning the floor. They are the most dedicated lay leaders I have ever worked with in my 25 plus years of temple service. Over those seven years, many situations have arisen that are cri have critical meaning, especially during these past two years. At times, Zoom meetings were set up within hours, and all six would be in attendance. Now that's dedication. Everyone on the exec board has their own views and opinions. However, it's quite amazing when it comes to what is best for our congregation, all these views go out the window. We have all become friends, and you know how you tell a good friend? You can banter back and forth, tell that person that it's a lousy idea, and still be able to walk out of a meeting talking and laughing with another. There is something said for continuity. I could go on and on how important these six people are to this temple, but I'm going to leave that to Rabbi Alex as I'm sure he feels the same way. And by the way, we have added one new face, old as he might be, but young in heart, and over 40 years of temple experience to our exec board this year. David Sapphire fits in perfectly with this group as he knows what it takes to run a successful temple. Welcome, David. One last person I'd like to thank on behalf of all of us. We thank him every year. Fortunately, we have a dedicated temple attorney. One that at a drop of a hat will respond to any question we might have, especially during these COVID years. Barry Radlin has been a sounding board, a person who keeps us in line when we tend to stray. I have accomplished a lot over these past nine years, and folks, Barry's always there for me, knowing all the steps I was taking. He was that voice, loud at times, sometimes yelling at me. He was there to tell me, no, Todd, you can't do that, that's illegal, <laughs> or go get him. Thank you, Barry, for being there when your temple needs you, when I need you. So folks, there it is, another stay of the temple speech. Our future looks bright, especially with a, with a new community religious school starting this month in our building. The signing of a new daycare business called LE3, which brings in needed revenue, and next year we'll be celebrating our 10 year anniversary. Stay tuned for details about events we will be hopefully having concerning the celebration. I can still remember leaving Temple Sinai with a Torah in my hand, walking down Longmeadow, down Sheridan, and up these stairs. So are we stable? Do we have great clergy? Are we better off than we were not quite 10 years ago? I think thanks to every one of you, the answer is yes. Ashana Tovah.